99% of producers will never be able to reach their maximum potential and achieve their goals. The remaining 1% though will always be able to get ahead of everyone else. Why is that? The beat game is oversaturated. We already know this. So why is it that some producers still manage to get ahead of everyone else, stand out from the herd, and make themselves household names? What if I told you these producers think and do things that 99% of producers don't? In this video, we're going to take a look at what I believe sets apart that top 1% of producers and what you can do starting today to get yourself on the right track. First and foremost, we're going to talk about you and how you view yourself and your beats. In the music production community, we kind of avoid talking about this, but everyone's experiencing it. And that is the extreme lack of confidence in our work. You listen to your favorite artist, you get motivated, you listen to your own beats and instantly start drawing comparisons, which in turn makes you not want to make any more music. I know because I've been there. And you might actually think that you'll get over this at some point when your beats actually become good, but the reality of the situation is you won't. You don't believe your beats are good, and unless you change that, you'll never think they're good enough. We often think about our music in terms of other people's art, which is inherently flawed. All art is meant to be unique. If certain artists don't see the value in your beats, then maybe they're not the right match for your beats. And the top 1% understand this. They are confident about their work. Whether other people like it or not, it doesn't make a difference to them. They keep pushing in the direction they feel is right for them, and over time, they start finding their people and their sound, which catapults them to the top. 99% of producers are waiting to build that confidence and are losing opportunities daily. I'll start sending my beats out when they're placement ready, or I'll start selling beats when my beats are good enough. These are all excuses. The problem isn't the quality of your beats, the problem is how you view yourself in your art. You could be making the best possible beats, but with that mentality, you'd never know. And while you gotta work on building up that confidence to present your beats how they deserve to be presented, there's a major problem. You see, 99% of producers fall into a trap. The scary thing about this trap is that most of them won't even realize it. Let's take a look at two producers and see if you can spot the difference. Producer A has been making beats for three years now. He's pretty good at it. He makes a decent amount of money from his successful YouTube channel and he feels good about his beats. So he wakes up every day, opens up his laptop and he gets to cooking. And he makes beats the exact same way he's been making them for the past three years. He has a system that works and he replicates it. To make things super efficient, he has all his drum sounds and VSTs properly organized and he pumps out two almost identical sounding beats back to back. He uploads them to his channel and he calls it a day. Producer B is in a similar boat. He's also been making beats for three years. He also has a pretty successful YouTube channel but he feels like there could be more to it. Every day he wakes up and tries to make a beat using completely new sounds. He doesn't mind if the process takes longer, and he definitely doesn't mind if things don't work out. Occasionally his beats flop, which in turn affects his income, but he really enjoys experimenting and figuring out his sound. When he's done, he spends time reading his analytics, which videos did well and which videos could have done better. He also spends time reading his comments and engaging with his audience. Based on the feedback he receives, he adjusts and tries again, constantly improving. Now, in case you didn't know this, producer B differs from producer A in one major aspect, and that is not getting complacent. In other words, he's constantly trying to improve regardless of where he is. The majority of producers will get complacent as soon as they reach a point where they feel like their hard work has paid off. That might be the specific amount of money, followers, or placements based on their goals. For the top 1% though, the numbers are just tiny bleeps in the grand scheme of their careers. These are not end goals. For them, improvement continues on a daily basis regardless of their income or their status. They're always striving to get to the next level. Their success isn't dictated by others. Now there's one more thing which I've realized sets apart that top 1% from the 99% of producers. And it's a little bit controversial and it's one I had a lot of trouble with and I'm sure you will too. Think back to how you got into making beats. Not how you felt, but literally how you started making beats. Let me take a wild guess. You downloaded a cracked version of FL, maybe watched a couple of tutorials on YouTube, then went over to Reddit and got some free drum kits and you just started putting things together. Was that accurate? How many times did you think, I'll pay for it when I make money for my beats? Here's the thing. Unlike the 99% of producers, the top 1% are not scared to invest in themselves. They believe in their work and their potential. Yes, they might have also started off with a cracked doll, but over the years have invested thousands of dollars in their art. Think about it this way. If you're too scared to bet on yourself, chances are you don't want it that bad. On top of that, why would artists invest in you? Investing in yourself is a big step, especially if you've been doing this for a couple of years without even considering it. And I definitely don't recommend you start spending thousands of dollars on anything that has to do with making beats, but you gotta start looking at yourself as a smart investment and hopefully over time develop the skills required to make the right financial decisions for your career. Investing in yourself isn't just about getting new sounds and VSTs. 
It's also about treating your art with respect. Once you start putting money into it, you'll start taking yourself more serious. As someone who personally went through this, I can say that when I actually bought a license for Ableton, I started making beats twice as fast. It's not like the cracked version was slower. It was just a mental switch that made me go 10 times harder. But before you run off with everything I just said, think about this. Do you really want to be in the top 1%? I feel like in the producer community, we don't really have an understanding of what success could look like across the board. Instead, we have the image of two extremes. Either you're broke and starving, or you're literally Kanye, and everything in between just doesn't matter. Where do the metros, the south sides, and the hundreds of thousands of producers with major placements land across the spectrum? How do you define the top 1%? Is it based on their accomplishments, their net worth, or their quality of work? But if you're watching this part of the video, I really, really appreciate you. You could subscribe. I'll see you next time.